So guys, tonight I have Shelby Wagner. She is a retired music teacher and she's a self-published author. Um, She was married for 50 years. She's a mom of two and a Grammy of one and also a senior dating advocate. Welcome, Shelby. Uh, Thank you, Keisha. I appreciate being here with you and looking forward to talking with you. Absolutely. So guys, last week I had Eleanor on the show and Eleanor talked about senior dating and, you know, what it's like getting back in the game, you know, how you do that. And tonight Shelby is going to be touching on a different topic. So she's going to shed some light on dating and romance scams which I think is so interesting because this can affect us at any age. And now that we're in like this age of technology where, you know, we're meeting people online, you know, we're more susceptible to things like this. So I thought that this was going to be like a great topic to discover and talk about. And I'm so happy to have Shelby here. Thank you. So Shelby is the author of a book called Learning to Dance in the Rain, Surviving Grief, Internet Dating, and Romance Scam. So we're going to have her share a little bit of what she touches on in the book. So the first thing I'd like for you to share with us, Shelby, is tell us about the love you have experienced in your life and what you shared in your book about love. And this can just be high level. It can be like one thing that you want to specifically talk about tonight on the podcast. Mm -hmm. But, you know, share your your greatest experience in love and, you know, what you shared in your book. Well, uh, the second my book is divided into four parts. And the first part is the loss of my husband about four days before he died. Uh, We were planning our 50th wedding anniversary. And uh, you really have to love someone to be married for 50 years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that doesn't mean that it's always smooth sailing along the line either. Uh, you know, because you do have your difference. You're two different people. Um, so in the first part of my book, I'm talking mainly about him and how uh, he got pneumonia and how he passed. And then I'm talking about the funeral and how all of the things you have to do immediately following uh, a funeral. And then the second part gets into discussing um, what it is that you want to do with the rest of your life. I mean, I felt like I was catapulted into the unknown. I mean, I'd been with this man for 50 years, the love of my life, um, you know, raised two children with him. And all of a sudden, uh, he was gone. It was like Humpty Dumpty falling off the wall, the pieces of my life laying on the floor in front of me. And uh, I did not know what I was going to do. Uh, luckily, my children, my, my son and daughter, they came to my aid and, and uh, offered my, their support. And my daughter even suggested that I move in with them until I sold my house in Tennessee, which was uh, difficult being there because we had built that house together. He had designed it according to my specifications, uh, loving me and knowing how I wanted things. And uh, so it was very hard to be in that house alone without him. And so my daughter and I had never been alone because my parents, uh, I I stayed home and went to college living at home. And then um, uh, I lived at home. My dad says, you're not leaving my home until you get married and move into your husband's home. <laughs> Back in those days, 55 years ago, you know, uh, to, for a, a single woman to move out into an apartment or whatever, even with friends was just not part of what my family was willing to accept. Um, and so I had never lived alone. Um, uh, so 
all of a sudden I am alone and uh, I'm out in the country. I had a beautiful new roundhouse that we had built together on the mountaintop in Smoky Mountains. And I could see forever. I could see the mountains in the distance and uh, all of the rolling hills in between. And so it was scary for me to even think about. My daughter says, I know you've never been alone, so we want you to come live with us, give you time to grieve, time to sell your home, time to think about what you want to do for the rest of your life. Well, that was a big undertaking, you know. Oh, you mean there's another chapter? <laughs> I, I wanted to die too. <laughs> I thought, why, God, why did you not take me to I don't know and I was angry with my husband for leaving me alone to deal with all of this and with God uh, for a while there and uh, it was just it was heartbreaking and, and devastating for anyone to lose uh, a loved one no matter how long they've been together no matter you know how whether it was divorce or whether it was through death or just plain walking away it's very difficult and in some ways, I think divorce is even more difficult because that person has rejected you and chosen to leave you, whereas in a, you know, in a death, they had no choice. So I decided about uh, eight months after losing my husband and living with my daughter that I sold my house. I want, I thought, I want to, um, I don't want to live alone the rest of my life. Eating out was very, very hard to do um, by myself going to the movie. I had gone by myself when I was married and it didn't mean too much, but boy, now as I was alone and I had no friends because I had moved 600 miles away from, from my friends. And so it was, it was a difficult time. And I told my daughter, I'd really like to make, you know, I've got to have a friend, some friends here. I left all my friends behind and and she said, well, we have, you know, there are people in and out of my house all the time. I said, yeah, but those are your friends. Those are your in-laws. You know, they're not mine. And they make me feel comfortable and I love them. But I need somebody that's, you know, my friend wanting to do things I want to do. And so she, she and my son were both very much against me going, uh, trying the Internet dating site, even though my son had found his wife uh, on one of them. And um they said, well, they don't, those men on those wedding, they don't want a friend, mom. Uh, <laughs> they're going to steal your money. They're going to want sex. They're going to, you know, all this bad stuff. And I thought, my daughter thought I had not grieved enough and uh, wasn't ready to get back. She says, you know how difficult dating was when you were 20, 50 years ago. You know, it's even worse nowadays. And uh, I, I thought I was up to it, but uh, Apparently, I wasn't because um, I did, uh, well, when I first signed up for a dating site, I thought I was the darling of the internet because so many men were messaging me that, oh, gee, you're beautiful and I love your profile and we want, you know, we want to get to know you better and blah, blah, blah. And I didn't know at the time that most of those <laughs> messages were from scammers uh, who were, you know, they were realizing that I was a widow. And they target in on widows and widowers too, and single um, single people who are lonely and vulnerable. And uh, so, yeah, I did get scammed, and um, I had a lot of chances to get scammed by others that I chose not to. But uh, the one that uh, that caught me off guard, or not really off guard, but got to me, was realizing that he knew I was a Christian and took advantage of, of my Christian upbringing and the fact that you take, you know, you give to those in need and help those that, uh, that need help. And uh, he was uh, stranded in China and he was, money had been stolen and his passports had been confiscated by the police and he was starving to death. I figured he was probably a scammer. I mean, it was, he had all the red signs that I didn't, know then that I <laughs> learned in the next year and a half but um, I had that one smidgen of thought if if he's really dying in uh, China because he's starving to death then um, I'm going to help him so I sent him some money not as much as he wanted and then that was the problem because he wanted more 
And um, I don't know if you want me to get into that right now, but uh, um, so I decided somewhere along the line that I wanted to find love and romance. I didn't okay. want to be alone for the rest of my life, and I didn't want just a friend. All right. So, all right, let's back up a little bit. So I asked you about love and, you know, to tell us a little bit about the the greatest experience of love in your life. And I guess that would have been what you had with your husband, right? Because you guys were married for 50 years. You were in a loving marriage. Um, and then suddenly he passes away. And now you're going through the rest of your life, you know, on your own, right? Right. In that second part of my book, I, I deal with uh, one of my chapters is what is love? And um, uh, what is uh, falling in love? What is in love? What is uh, attraction and all of that? And um, love, it says, is a, uh, a defined as a profoundly tender, passionate affection for another person, a feeling of warm personal attachment as for a parent, a child, a friend, or someone that you love. And uh, being in love with someone is also a definition. A friend and I just had a discussion about the difference between in being in love with somebody and loving them. And it was quite an interesting uh, thing. I tried to find a definition of the phrase being in love, but in love is always followed by the preposition with, whereas I love you, I love him, I love my husband. It doesn't have that preposition in there. So it's, to me, being in love with someone means that they're also in love with you. And um, that's kind of, one of my uh, women friends says, well, being in love is how you feel for your husband or the one you marry. And loving someone is like, your your children the the feeling that you have for children i think the greeks were very um very um, um astute to have the i think it is seven different words that mean love and they describe when they said eros you knew that was sexual love or passionate love the one for the one that you're going to marry uh, and then there's the philia, philia whatever, <laughs> for your brotherly love or your, for your friends or, and then the parent love. Each one has a different word. And for, for people in the United, uh, that speak English, love means so many different things and can be mi misunderstood so much, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, that's really an interesting topic, um, being in love and just loving so mm -hmm. yeah um, I, um, yeah I, I kind of ended that chapter with some uh, people are always say well how do I know if he loves me or how do I know if she loves you know she's really in love with me she said she is but is she really and uh, how do I know if I'm in love with that person for sure so there are two pages three pages of of uh, texts and bulleted things that tell you, all right, it, you're in love with him if you really want your friends and your family to l like him, you know, if you celebrate his triumphs or her triumphs, uh, even though maybe you yourself are failing at the moment, but you appreciate the, that the one you love is having success. Um, you definitely like the person and they like you. You really miss them when they're, uh, you're not together. You're not jealous uh, of that love. Uh, um, or you may be a little bit envious or whatever, but you're not suspiciously. It doesn't get into the uh, possessiveness kind of, you know, controlling love. It's um, like uh, in parentheses, uh, the definition of Corinthians, I believe it is, that um, uh, love is patient and kind <laughs> and um, doesn't envy, it doesn't boast, is not proud, doesn't dishonor others, it keeps no record of wrongdoing. You know, it always protects and always trusts, always hopes and always perseveres. I think when it comes down to it, if you really want to know if you love him, can you follow that First Corinthians 
chapter three, verse four through seven, and really feel that way about somebody. Yeah. So the next thing I wanted to move on to was loss, but I think you covered that um, in the beginning, you talked about loss first, actually you talked about losing your husband and how that affected you and um, just not, you know, not being prepared for it and just how it disrupted your entire life. Yes. And I wanted to then move on to the new adventures um, that you found yourself on now that, you know, you have to start this new chapter um, on your own. So the first thing you talked about was wanting to find some companionship, living with your daughter um, in a new town and wanting to go online and, and test things out and your kids being a little hesitant about, you know, <laughs> allowing you to do that because of the dangers that are out there. Right. So um, when you went online, were you looking specifically for um, like male companionship or I don't even know if there's a website where you can find people to like hang out with when you are a certain age or just well, period. I think there, there are um, meetup groups Okay, where you can uh, meet other uh, people that have same interests as you are. For example, if you play pinochle, you know, you can find other groups that are playing pinochle and kind of join that way. I know my brother and sister-in-law uh, out in Colorado, that's uh, in Texas, uh, they had met some people to, uh, for that purpose. Uh, I'm not familiar with any others. Um, most of the, da- the dating sites are what they say, dating sites. Uh, you do have um, <laughs> um, people that hack these uh, dating sites. One time I went on one of them and I had all women had a check on me <laughs> and my picture was a man. My oh profile goodness. had been changed, but my picture had been changed to a man and I had all women. And I immediately contacted the, the uh, company and they immediately changed it. It was a hacker that had changed everything. But uh, a few times I got would be checking through the pictures and there would be a picture of a woman. Mm. And I often wondered, I think that happened two or three times. I often wondered if they forgot uh, when they were setting up their profile, if they made the mistake, because it says I'm a woman looking for a man or I'm a a man looking for a woman. And if you click the wrong one, (laughs) then that could happen. Or I didn't know, maybe perhaps they were, uh, you know, looking for the same sex. Uh, friend. Right. I don't know what they were, but yeah. I said, oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> so your so was your first experience with meeting um, someone and actually engaging in conversation? Was that person a scammer? The very first uh, person that I kind of liked, I was, uh, I thought maybe that that we might meet. And then about three days into the chat, I decided to run a background check on him. Mm -hmm. And uh, the background check looked looked pretty much like he told me. He lived in Northern Ohio uh, and so on. And I was about ready to click out of it thinking, okay, this guy is uh, okay. Mm -hmm. And then something caught my eye. And I went back and looked and there were three women's names uh, and their ages, uh, and uh, showing that they were very much alive. Well, he had told me his two daughters, who were named these two of these names, and his wife, who was the third name, uh, they had died many years ago. Uh, oh. The daughters had been young, young children, like 10 or 12. And here they are shown on the background check at 60 and 63 (laughs) and uh, the woman that he said was his mother was 90 something so I thought "Uh aha this darn guy you know this is right yeah so it it took a while um the first guy and I if you're interested in uh, finding out um my very first date was quite a (laughs) I was terrified and of course I fixed myself up as as uh, nicely as I I could. I looked pretty darn good. And I was really nervous driving. I was meeting him a half an hour away to a a restaurant uh, that was 
you know, halfway between him and me. And so here I am really looking, uh, being scared, but excited too. And I walked into the restaurant and looked around and there was this man waving at me in the back. And I thought, oh, please don't let it be him. <laughs> but it was. And he, <laughs> he had a beard down to his chest and, <laughs> and it was scraggly and needing trim, not, not neatly trimmed at all. And then he had all this hair that was sticking out all over his head. It must have been Oh, it was longer, a lot longer than my hair. <laughs> oh, my and he looked like he hadn't combed it in a while. And, but he was waving at me and grinning. So I knew that was him. So I said, well, Shelby, you got yourself into it. You're going to go and you're going to have a good time. And so I walked back there and I said, introduced, he, he got up and introduced to Shelby. Ho. He recognized me right away. Of course, I, I never recognize any of the men when I see them. <laughs> from their pictures but they always seem to recognize me and um, so anyway we sat down and we had uh, we talked for quite a while a long time and then we had our meal and I had a really good time and we had a lot in common and and um, his shirt I noticed had not been ironed and I don't know how long I said well there were two 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 things against him one is that he reminded me of what my husband might have been looked like if I had married him and took a, <laughs> taken care of him all the <laughs> right <laughs> and the other thing was he was very uh, much like him uh, in a lot of ways and um, he just reminded me of my husband I thought well that's not a good sign at all you know and then um, when we got up to leave he wanted me to he wanted to walk with me out and he paid and I waited well then um, he leaned over to give me a, 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 a hug, and that was all right. I'm not, a, I'm a hugger. Um, but when he went for a kiss, and I turned my uh, face so that it was a, a you know kiss on the cheek, and and that wasn't too bad. That was a little bit worse, <laughs> you know. But mm -hmm. then when he, his hand reached up and touched my breast, I just about. <gasps> Oh my gosh. Are you kidding me? No, I'm not kidding you. And so I, I hurried up and got myself out of there, got myself in the car and started to go and I cried and I, Oh my gosh, I can't do this. You know, I don't know. <laughs> Whatever made me think that I could do this. And, and uh, so that was quite a traumatic experience. And then, but you know what? I dated over 50 men in, in the next year and a half and not one of them did what he did. <laughs> that is so crazy. I can't believe older men are doing things like that. Oh my, you would be surprised. <laughs> you would have to be surprised. Oh I got um, one of the disadvantages of uh, the internet I've discovered is the pictures that you can, that they can uh, send you. And for some reason they, really think that a uh, woman wants to see their um, <clears throat> private parts. <laughs> oh my <laughs> <got> gosh. Of... <laughs> Older oh, guys okay. are sending D pics. Yep. Oh my gosh. I really cannot believe that. That is <laughs> shocking to me. Uh, oh, well, it was quite shocking to me too. And I uh, know it would be to some of the other people if, <laughs> if uh, women, if they knew, you know, uh, and I don't know, I, I never talked with them, you know, sexually that much about it um, to make it an X rated, but boy, I, I did, I probably got about eight or 10 <laughs> wow. different guys sending me these pictures, but um, the... Um, so you said something very interesting. You said that the first guy, he reminded you of your husband and you thought that that wasn't a good thing. Why did you think that that wasn't a good thing? Well, I was afraid uh, if I, um, I would always be comparing the two of them mm. if they were too much alike. Right. And, you know, uh, I didn't think it would be a very good idea to to um, mistake and, and call him the wrong name, for example. I mean, I didn't think I would want to be called the name of the first wife. Yeah, <laughs> that's so true. But, you know, um, I met Bill um, about, well, about two years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, we talked one, one day. We had a lot of fun flirting back and forth. He was from Indianapolis. And then he went off the dating sites. And I didn't see him for about seven or eight months. Mm -hmm. and uh, then he came back on and um, I've kind of forgotten what where I was heading with this but we were talking about um, 
of why oh, reminding you of someone. Um, he and I get along. We finally did get together. It took a year for us to uh, get back together and decide that, yeah, we we didn't have a lot in common, but we sure liked each other and we liked some of the same things and we're very, we're very patient with each other. And sometimes I've called him Bob, even though his name is Bill, and he's, he doesn't react negatively. And, you know, some, he talks about his ex-wife and uh, we just get along very fabulously. And we don't even, I don't even worry about it anymore if I happen to slip with the wrong name and he doesn't worry about it either. But I think with some men, it would have been very uh, upsetting to them or even to some women if, if their new husband called them by their first wife's name. I know and he was the one that touched your breast, right? Oh, no, 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 oh, no. no. I never saw <laughs> that guy again. No, I oh, okay. <laughs> he cooked his goose right away. No, what I'm thinking about Bill is that, that things have just been so very easy and uh, um you know even even though we're very different two different very different people um we haven't had raised voices or argued about anything in the uh we've been together just a little over a year just uh, about the time that covid started you know and the quarantines which i'm very glad that god sent this man <laughs> in my life so i wouldn't have been alone during all this time like a and he you met him online Yes, I did. Okay. Oh, wow. That's great. Yeah. So it took a lot him. of... I met um, at him online after I had been scammed. In fact, after I had written my book, because he went on Facebook. Uh, I, I This is my second book, which is the second edition of the first one. It's got the first book inside it, plus more added to it. Mm -hmm. And so in 2018, in December, I had published the first book. And then when Bill and I got together about the middle of the 19, he said, oh, I see you've wrote a, written a book. Oh, he says, I think that's wonderful. And I had other men say, oh, I see you've written a book. Have you been writing about me? You know, and they're oh, very intimidated geez. by it. But Bill, he's just, oh, gee, this is wonderful. I'm very supportive. And, and uh, but I heard my hairdresser said that one woman was very upset that her husband refused to take a picture of uh, put the pictures of his ex-wife you know or former wife away that she didn't want to see them and um patty told her hey you know that was part of his life you should not feel that way and i kind of feel that way too i asked bill i said do you want me to put my pictures of of my husband away and he says, no, they don't bother me. He says, he's part of your life. You were married to him for 50 years. Why should it bother me now? Right. You know, I think that's a very wholesome, a very realistic um, view of the whole thing instead of this jealousy that so many people have. Oh, don't you dare talk to me about your your first wife. I don't want to hear it, you know. So right. no, people, they still need to talk about things that they remember. I love that. So let me ask you now that you guys been dating um what are your plans are you guys living together do you plan on moving in together uh is marriage something that you talk about like where do you think this is going well i can tell you <laughs> <laughs> um my daughter said to me when i started uh, uh, first started this the whole thing and she said well i'd rather you live together than get married again yeah. And I was there, that was kind of strange because I had taught her, you know, you don't get, you don't have sex until you're married. And, and as far as I know, she didn't. Um, and so here she is telling me it's okay. She's mom, you're 76, 77. What difference does it make anymore? Yeah. And I, I had a lot of thinking to do because there's a lot of, you know, I had one good friend that she told, oh yeah, you got to get married again. Well, the first year, that's what I was thinking. I was going to get married again. Well, then um, a friend of mine got engaged. She, we were in the dancing classes together, which is where my book title came from as I learned to dance as I navigated my grief and um, a line dance and so on. Anyway, she says, Shelby, I just learned that um, if a couple is married um, and one of them has to go in the nursing home, then all of that combined income is considered your income and it goes to provide 
the nursing care in the nursing home for that first person. And if the second one then has to go in the nursing home, there's no money left for them. And I thought, really? And she says, if you're not married, then your money is yours and his money is his, and they don't even think about combining them. And I thought, well, you know, if you're wealthy, I guess it doesn't matter uh, you, if you get married, okay, because you both can afford whatever. But when you're struggling just with social security and, and pensions, and both of you have, the, you know, you have what's yours and what's his. Um, uh, anyway, uh, Bill and I decided now yeah, we're, we're living together. We're not getting married. And uh, I'm okay with it. I wouldn't have been that way three years ago, but, you know, you... And I went to an attorney to find out if that was true. And he says, yes. Yeah, I I kind of agree with your daughter. Um, you know, I think at this stage in your life, yeah, you did it right the first time. And, you know, now you're at a different chapter and it's okay, you know. Um, so I, I think if it works and you guys are happy, like, that that's fantastic, you know. I I just uh, think you know it can't get it can't get any better than what it is already. <laughs> right. Well, it, unless our health was a little bit better. <laughs> <laughs> of course, right. That, that, <laughs> that would help. But <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, I said to some things. Have you seen these men who are seventy five, eighty years old? <laughs> <laughs> like rock Hudson <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> but, definitely you know you you find someone that you're compatible with that you can share uh interests and so on and um my my um, bill's daughter they said asked him um, a few months ago well how are you know how's this relationship going and and he says well it's really nice to be with someone who is positive and happy all the time because um as the daughter knew and he you know knew that he had not been in that kind of a relationship before Mm. (laughs) usually they were moody or depressed or yeah you know bipolar or whatever and so well what what different kind of woman than what he's used to but he seems to be very happy and uh, i'm very happy too Oh, yes. I love that he has gotten a breath of fresh air in his life as well. Mm -hmm. He was on the dating site for about six years. (laughs) Wow. Seven. Yeah, off and on. And uh, the last three women that he, well, his wife, he was married for 41 years, I believe. And his wife one day said, I don't want to be married anymore. So he was kind of crushed with that. Well, then he met uh, three, he's had three other relationships uh, he married one of them and she died from a heart attack. And then he said two other girlfriends and both of them died. <laughs> wow. So finally he's come to me and uh, okay. Right. Well, <laughs> how Let's long keep it going, going, Shelby. Let's. <laughs> <laughs> We're not going there. So this right. is, this is my Don't... next chapter. And uh, <laughs> I, uh, I said, well, I'm, we're doing, we're doing very well. And uh, his daughter's been living in his house in Indianapolis and she just bought a house they're fixing up and so we said okay we're gonna live in my house we're gonna sell my house and live in his house you know what are we gonna do and so uh, I'll sell both of them and move somewhere else new I don't know yet we <laughs> we're in the talking stages and not quite sure what we should do next but we've got time we've got lots of time and you know what's so interesting to me is I always wonder like why older people move like sometimes I'll hear someone say oh my my parents are moving or oh my mom's moving or oh my dad and I'm like why are they moving like what is happening here don't you after you get to a certain age don't you just stay put but things happen in your life where you actually move you might meet someone you both have houses you have to make a decision Mm -hmm. um a spouse passes away you sell the house like things happen so that's very interesting too there's a different different strokes for different folks (laughs) right yeah because i've met uh, one man uh, you know that they they kept both of their houses and they go back and forth weekends and whatever and take care of the other one and blah 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 and then there's been them where she sold her house moved in with him and then the other way and so people just um i always thought well maybe i wouldn't want to live in the house with my future uh, husband uh, that he had lived in with other 
wife. And um, my house, I bought it new after um, my husband died. So my husband never lived here. So that's not a problem here. Uh, on the other hand, with Bill's house, uh, his uh, second wife lived there. And um, so it's, I don't know, I thought, mm, I don't know, I guess I'd rather rather live in a new place with them rather than be reminded that she's <laughs> she once was here <laughs> I don't know it's it, uh, you your ideas change as you get older and right you're able to um, I think well a lot of us have issues and uh, I don't know it seems like um, Bill and I we really don't have any issues we at least not to disrupt our life and disrupt, disrupt our relationship we we just get along very well. That's amazing. It is very amazing. It and is. And like Eleanor, I know Eleanor quite well. And and uh, I don't know if she mentioned, but uh, her friend kept his place and she has hers. And <laughs> yeah, yeah. She did say that. She talked about being, you know, living separate and loving it, you know. Uh-huh. So like you said, different strokes for different folks. Right. So uh, I asked I've... Bill if, if he thought about that and he said well I have thought about it but so far we're staying together (laughs) right so let's go back um a little and talk about the scamming so how many times have you actually been scammed online I hope it was just once (laughs) well only one that I sent money to um but I've had about 350 requests for money Oh my gosh, are you kidding me? <laughs> no, I'm not. Um, back two years ago, I read that uh, at every every single minute of every single day, there are 25,000 scammers talking to a possible victim. And now this is two years later, I assume that's much larger than that. So um, it's very prevalent. It's, it's the costliest, romance scammers are the costliest scam ever reported to the Federal Trade Commission. And there's, I don't know, I've sent, seen lots of statistics with different reports of how much money was lost. And, and I was saying uh, the figure, but I am I think I'm accurate in saying that over a billion dollars has been lost in the last five years by singles and seniors to these romance scammers. And I'm wondering, these guys are so obvious, I really don't understand how someone can get, let's put it, you can't understand unless you've been there. Um, I, I, that's why I, I uh, uh, doubled the size of my first book to include the letters, email letters that I received from these scammers to show how they uh, encourage you, how they compliment you, how they make you feel so good with their words and what the, and, and you start dreaming about a future. And in the beginning, when you don't know any better, you believe these people um, and um, you fall for them. And so I would, I thought I'm going to include the red flags. I have 38 red flags in there that tell you some of them, if you, if they ask for money, There's no other flag you need. That means it's a scammer. So hang up, stop talking to them, block them, whatever. And because they're only going to make you feel bad because it goes from being all the support and everything to all this negative. Well, you're no Christian. You don't, you don't practice what you preach. You don't help the poor, you know, as a doll, I help the poor, but I don't help liars and cheats, which is what you are. (laughs) <laughs> you know wow. that, that's that's the way it is and um so um the scammer he asked, said did I say he got to me because uh, he knew I was a Christian and uh he was it was like I'd missionaries I'd heard in foreign countries who were arrested and put in prison and never released or, or they were killed or and I I that was preying on my mind and so when uh, he he said to be alone as soon as I get home I will uh, I'll put the money back to you and and so on and uh, he promised I'd have it within three weeks and because I told him I was closing on my house and that was part of my down payment you know and uh, oh I'll get it back to you I'll get it well baloney 
when I went to the state, my daughter, I wasn't going to tell anybody. I was so upset about the whole thing. But I ended up uh, <laughs> telling my daughter. I was so convinced this man was um, starving to death that I asked my daughter if they would help him. <laughs> and that's when she, I mean, that's how bested a person gets in this uh, communication with this person. I didn't love him. I wasn't falling in love with him. I had no, you know, but he was a fellow member of the human race who was starving. And uh, when I told her what was going on, oh my God, mom, you're, you have been scammed. And she took me to the state police and we reported it and uh, took me to the bank and all this and, uh, um, you know, to help me. And I even got grounded. She wouldn't let me on the internet. I was living with her. So she wouldn't let me on the internet for two weeks. (laughs) 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 And um, So, yeah, uh, I, I, in that first two years, I talked to 200 um, men, which uh, I know one was a teenager. And I assume that like Bill, he knows that, um, these beautiful young 30 year old women that are trying to get money out of him are really men. And he's got some of them to admit admit it. And Bill says, I could teach them to be better scammers. (laughs) 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 Um, But um, uh, if they are uh, an American and they're out of the country, that's a really red flag. Uh, A lot of, I had one 70 year old man tell me he had a 10 year old daughter. I said, what? You know, how does that happen? <laughs> mm, mm, <laughs> he tried mm. to explain it, but uh-uh, I don't believe it. And so if um, these scammers, they will, um, if they are engineer, if they have their own business, if they are in the military, if they were oil riggers, all of these were type of the, the type of uh, jobs that these men had that, you know, I got to know that asked me for money. Uh, sometimes the, the one man uh, was on a, uh, a submarine ship and they had engine room trouble and he needed 25,000 he needed me to buy a part for the uh, for the submarine and uh, uh, helicopter it out to him at sea so he could fix uh, that ship other because otherwise the pirates were going to come and kill them all <laughs> oh my so that's, that's one real long story but I did not fall for that one <laughs> and I had oil riggers which there was one very handsome guy that claimed to be an engineer on oil rigging out in Eng- near English uh, channel and oh boy I had a hard time not saying no to him I mean to saying no to him um not sending him money but um after that, I decided I was not going to give my heart to anybody until I met them. And then when I told that later on to other scammers wanting me to commit, wanted me to trust them, wanted me to not talk to anybody else on the, on the dating site. And I said, no, I, I'm not, I've got friends I'm, I have made. I'm going to continue. Oh, no, you know, you need to just pay attention to me. And I said, no, I'm not going to do that. Well, you need to trust me. No. I can't trust you until I have met you and spent time with you. And I can't love you until we have met. And the same thing, you need time getting to know each other, getting to uh, know whether you like, really like each other before you fall in love with someone. Um, I don't know how you fall in love with letters and, and um, pictures because they steal the pictures from from the uh, internet you know it's, it, it, the pictures are out there and they steal the pictures they steal profiles um they tell you what you want to hear um and uh, the letters are beautiful I and mean, i have a whole chapter of uh, letters from uh, the, one of the one of the guy two of the guys one of them especially were very endearing and I thought, why am I putting this up there? And I said, because people who are so skeptical and don't can't understand how an educated woman can fall for this crap, <laughs> pardon my language. Um, well, if they read that letter, those letters that this guy sent me, who wouldn't want to get letters like that? In them? <laughs> and right. Then, you know, I mean, so, so I think that 
if it seems too good to be true, it probably is. If you have someone that's never wanting to actually meet you in person, it's yes. probably a scammer. If someone asks you definitely. for anything to send them anything, it's definitely a scam. Do not send them money. Do not tell them you're uh, this one guy want to know my bank, my bank number, my bank account so he could put some money in it. I said, no way. <laughs> what do you mean? You don't trust me. Said, no, I do not trust you. <laughs> I don't know you. And you're right. not getting that information from me. So uh, keep your financial person uh, inf- information to yourself um, and maybe someone that you trust, like an attorney, maybe, maybe your son or your daughter, they need to know uh, where your affairs are so they don't worry about you so much and know that your money is protected and so on. Um, I have a website called learning to dance in the and uh, if a, there's a blog on there where I try to update it weekly, but uh, I need to do better. And they can sign up, uh, register their email address for me. I can send them uh, if they have questions. I would be glad to chat with them, give them some support, because if you're grieving, you need that support. And and, uh, yeah, I grieved for my husband, and yet I grieved when I, uh, for myself, um, when I gave that money that I couldn't afford to give and knew that I had been so gullible to uh, fall for that scan. And I want other people to uh, read my book, know how to have a successful dating experience. Uh, I have tips for what to do to, to you know, have fun with it. Don't, don't get so emotional about it. And how to get more, uh, you know, learn more about the person. I give the tips on the recognizing of the of the red flags and and then the template letters and so on. So there's a lot of information in my book and that people need. And one woman who was a a married woman, she said, well, it's got information in there that married people need to know too. (laughs) So that made me feel good too. (laughs) Yeah. There's something that you shared with me on your sheet that I want you to share with the audience. And it's um, six things I wish I had known before my husband died. Oh, (laughs) What are those six things? Thank you for asking me about that. Somebody asked me what was my favorite chapter in the whole book. And that particular chapter is my favorite. It's called um, uh, Men and Women Are Wired Differently. And I things that you uh, under, learn about communicating with the opposite sex, everybody, <laughs> the men, I say, well, will you help me with this? Because I don't understand how a man thinks on on this subject. And the man would say, well, I don't understand how a woman can think on that subject either. So it goes both ways. But I read this uh, or I listened to this audio uh, called Understanding Men by Carlos Cavallo. Uh, He's a dating specialist. And uh, I picked out, uh, I got his permission to pick out about, about 15 items that I thought were very, very helpful that I wish I had known. The first, the first and the main one was that most men um, are, cannot uh, multitask. For example, if you tell him, you know, my husband would, uh, maybe he would be thinking on Saturday that he's going to fix the, the garage door. And then he gets out there and starts working on the garage door, but there's something missing, a spring or something that he doesn't have. And then he gets all upset because he can't fix the door because he doesn't have this part. And he can't get it because the door, the clo- doors, the stores have already closed. And I said to him, well, how about going upstairs and fixing the toilet in the bathroom? Oh, no. <laughs> He couldn't do that because his mind was geared on that garage door, you know, Mm -hmm. and so they can't switch real quickly to something else like women can. And that's what he was talking about with multitasking. Women do it naturally. We cook, we talk, we can talk on the phone, we can watch a TV program, we can babysit the kids and we can fix dinner all at the same time. (laughs) Yeah, Um, yeah, no, it's one thing at a time. And I wish I had known that because then I wouldn't, you know, Cavallo is saying, prepare, you know, schedule your want to talk time 
with a time when he's not reading a newspaper, when he's not watching a ball game or watching the news, you know, when he's not doing something else and, and schedule that time to sit down and just chat and uh, have, you know, talk about what it is. Um, another thing I learned from him was that it's okay to say, are you okay? Instead of saying, what's wrong? Why aren't you talking to me? Or all these other things that women come out with. Just say, are you okay? And they'll say, oh yeah, you know, or they'll say, well, well, this is kind of about, it. you know, it's a good way to get them to open up a lot easier. So I wish I had known that, those two things. Um, back to the multitasking, my pastor did a sermon um, and uh, he, he has he speak the um, computer screens up at the top that he's got pre-programmed stuff on it. And he says, this is what a man is. He was talking about the difference between men and women. And he says, this is a man. And up on the screen popped a waffle. <laughs> and because uh, a, a man is compartmentalized that's just what I was saying he was thinking about the garage door he didn't want to mm -hmm. think about the toilet stairs you know they're compartmentalized and a woman he says this is a woman and she's a spaghetti <laughs> with everything all mixed up together uh, <laughs> yeah so uh, it, it seemed kind of cute because he was supporting kind of what I had said in 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 that article about it um, so the main thing is that men can't, you know, I've asked men about this and most of them say, oh, yes, I can, you know, but I don't believe you can do three or four things at the same time like I can. But my son, he'll say, yeah, he's right on, you know, he says, I've got to have a few minutes when I get home from work to process my mind from the working environment to the home environment. And a lot of women don't understand that. Um, you know, and they start right away uh, uh, coming out with all these things. Oh, yeah, this happened today and that happened today. And uh, it's better to wait maybe half an hour, let him veg in front of the TV, let him read a little bit of his book, let him take a nap, let him do something, you know, say hello to him and give him a hug and so on. But let him go and be alone for just a little while until he can make that switch back to home life and your life will be a whole lot better. Um, men, another thing that's very important that I found, I wish I had known is that men don't love the same way that women do. Mm. And if a woman, and I see this all the time, a woman um, doesn't think he loves her because he doesn't do uh, X, Y, Z. And um, as Kavala says, he can't do X, Y, Z because he's not a woman, he's a man. <laughs> and they think differently they love differently a lot of times uh, to them uh, showing respect is uh, telling you that they love you or when they do something for you that is telling you that they love you rather than just saying I love you and hugging you and all of that that, that we expect you know um, but to, to just think okay what does that man do for me oh yeah I didn't have to ask him to carry out the garbage. He did it, you know, oh, okay, that's telling me that he loves me. <laughs> and a lot of people, uh, a lot of women just don't, um, don't think about that. Um, another th another uh, thing that I learned was um, don't be a doormat. A woman, a woman sometimes will be a doormat and not to mock all over and uh, that is not what you need to do. You need to stand up for yourself and uh, um, because otherwise they lose respect for you and um, they go looking for someone else that they can respect instead of you. Um, I don't know if that makes sense or not if I said enough about it, but- Absolutely. Very yeah, and I think that's a great one to end on. Like, that's really good. Yeah, we got to definitely stand up for ourselves. And I truly believe that. So I love that you said that. Uh -huh. the, the, a book that I was reading uh, just about that same time is that, what's it called? Men love, why, why men love bitches. <laughs> <laughs> and that's an awful name. I thought, oh my gosh. And when I got into it, but she doesn't mean the typical, stereotypical meaning that we think of with that word, what she means is we need to stand up for ourselves and men respect you more when you do stand up for yourself and 
when you just lean over backwards to do everything for them and you know let them get away with with murder <laughs> yeah for sure I mean. yeah so but anyway <laughs> <laughs> Well, it was such a pleasure having you on the podcast and finding out about your journey and how you've survived, you know, losing your husband and having your second, you know, chance at love and, you know, being able to pick up the pieces and move on successfully. And also... And it takes a lot of, uh, you know, they say it takes a lot of courage, or I don't have that much courage. I said, I didn't either in the beginning, but you take one step at a time. How do you eat an, how do you eat an elephant a piece at a time? Right, right. definitely. <laughs> and then going, being a victim of, um, <clears throat> you know, romance scamming and overcoming that as well. And then using your experiences to help teach other people how to, you know, be cautious and um, not fall into the same traps that you fell into. So please tell everyone where they can go to read up on the tips that you're sharing about um, romance scamming and how to purchase your book and all of the other interesting and helpful information that you have. All right. Um, My website uh, is um, learning to dance in the rain dot org and on there i have my scheduled events um, and where the per- people can listen to me they can buy the book at almost all retailers uh, where they sell books it's on amazon.com although they keep messing with my pricing on there it's a real good deal right now because they got <laughs> they keep <laughs> lowering the price but um, uh, amazon barnes and noble um, books a million it's a any book retailer can order it from Ingrams and get it for you. Um, it's very well worth it. Just make sure it's two, because the name of the book is Learning to Dance in the Rain, two, which means second edition, and then Surviving, surviving Grief, um, Internet Dating and Romance Scams. The first book uh, was uh, doesn't have a number and it's just. Uh, learning to dance in the rain, dealing with grief, online, moving on and online dating. So uh, I had to put the uh, a different um, subtitle in there. Um, and I think it's more specific to what the book is about. Uh, surviving grief, um, internet dating, because yeah, oh, you mean you teach us how to survive internet dating? I said, yeah, how to be successful at it. And I also teach you how to avoid those darn gamers so (laughs) so um i guess that's um, about it Uh, sign up for my email with your email i'd appreciate it i'm doing a newsletter and i will uh, keep you apprised of uh, what i you know what's going on i'm on facebook i'm on twitter i'm on instagram pinterest um linkedin (laughs) and a couple of new ones bizfluence i don't know if you know about that one's a new one and um, even one called remotehub.com. So I'm just about everywhere. (laughs) Congratulations on all your success. And I wish you continued success in your personal and professional life. And again, I really appreciate you stopping by and sharing these great points with us. Thank you so much.